We're going to take a look at Chapter 3 Probability Topics now. The chapter objectives are listed in the beginning of the chapter. We start with terminology. Probability is a measure that's associated with how certain we are of outcomes of a particular experiment. So an experiment is something that we plan out and we carry it under, uh, out under controlled conditions. So if the result is not predetermined, the experiment is said to be a chance experiment. So flipping a fair coin is an example of a chance experiment. Also rolling a six-sided fair dice would be a chance experiment. So the result of an experiment is called an outcome, and the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. We have three ways that we are going to represent a sample space, and they are to list all of the possible outcomes, to create a tree or a Venn diagram. And we use the uppercase letter S to denote the sample space. So for example, if you flip a fair coin, the sample space equals, and all of our possible outcomes there would be heads or tails. An event is any combination of outcomes. We use uppercase letters to represent events. So if the experiment is to flip a fair coin, event A might be getting at most one head. So the pro probability of an event A is written as P of A. The probability of any outcome is the long-term relative frequency of that outcome. Probabilities are all between 0 and 1 inclusive, meaning that it's 0 and 1 and any of the numbers in between. If you get the probability of an event A equals 0, it means the event can never happen. 1 means it always happens, and 0.5 means that there, it's equally likely to occur or not to occur. So let's take a look at an example. If you flip a fair coin repeatedly, so 20 to 2,000 to 2,000 times, the relative frequency of heads approaches 0.5. That's the probability of heads. Equally likely means that each outcome occurs with equal probability. So the same thing goes for a fair six-sided die that has one, two, three, four, five, or six. Each of those faces is as likely to occur as any other face. If you toss a fair coin, a head or a tail are equally likely to occur. If you randomly guess on a true-false question, you're equally likely to get the correct or an incorrect answer. If we want to calculate the probability of an event, then what you do is you take the number of outcomes in event A and divide it by the number of outcomes in the sample space. So you basically do the number of outcomes in your scenario over the total number of outcomes. And in this example, it says you've got a, a dime and a nickel, and you are looking for the two outcomes to meet. Um, the dime has heads, the nickel has tails, or the dime has tails and the nickel has heads. So you're trying to get one head. And there's two of those out of four total options, and you get 0.5 is the probability. Now if we look at rolling <clears throat> a six-sided die, let event E equal rolling a number that is at least five. So if we look at one, two, three, four, five, and six, we know that five and six are the two outcomes that are at least five. So then the probability of event E equals 2 over 6. If you only roll a die a few times, you might not get the same probability. So we are looking at when you roll uh, the die a very large number of times. So it's the overall probability. And we might not expect exactly 2 6 The long-term relative frequency of obtaining this result would approach the theoretical probability of 2 6 as we repeat the process over and over again. Let's look at one other example. Using the following information to answer the next six questions, 
you have a jar of 150 jelly beans, 22 red, 38 yellow, 20 green, 28 purple, 26 blue, and the rest are orange. So they want to know what's the probability of getting a blue. Well, there's 26 blue out of 150 total. So the probability of blue equals 26 over 150. You do the same thing for each of those. Probability of getting a green, well, there's 20 green. So the probability of getting green is 20 over 150. You do the same for each of those.